Ooh. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. Man, you know what? It is nice to have good things to talk about when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys. We uh, looked earlier today at Tyler Guyton, man. Tyler Guyton, man, what he did to that dude, man. I mean, literally. He he pushed him down the first time, and then he finished him the second time. He was an absolute positive beast. And you look at this. I want you to understand something here. It is conceivable that the Cowboys ended up doing the biggest move. It, we don't know yet. It's still early. It's only the second preseason game. So let's slow down on the anointment oil. But I want you to go back to the draft and think about the Cowboys trading back, taking Tyler Guyton, Twinkle Toes, and then picking up a third-round pick and drafting Cooper BB, the juggernaut. The Dallas Cowboys, if you'll remember, you know, people have selective memory. You know, they'll go through and they'll say, well, Dak Prescott, you know, he's got, you know, best offensive line in football and best running backs and best wide receivers. They don't know the amount of offensive linemen we've gone through over the last few years from Joe Looney to be oddish, you know, playing center, um, having guys like Jason Peters and, you know, a mismatch of guys, Lyle Collins, who had one one or two good years but then had the hip problem and all that in and out of the lineup. Uh, Terrence Steele, who's a rookie undrafted free agent who played his first year because Lyle Collins was injured and stuff, that we've had journeymen that have been on the offensive line. Our offensive line has been in flux. After literally having the Great Wall of Dallas, too, when you had Tyron Smith, Travis Frederick, and Zach Martin, that was one hell of an offensive line. Those guys got old. Tyron Smith breaking down, you know, averaging about seven games a year over the last four years. Having, you know, Travis Frederick gone and then back and Joe Looney and everything else. And for a while there, our left guard situation was, you know, Connor Williams or Connor McGovern, you know, or Jason Peters. I mean, we've done so many different things. It may be that the Dallas Cowboys offensive line has been rebuilt with the only thing that may be the soonest change might be Zach Martin may retire. But with a good year, you never know. He might stay around for a bit longer. If what we have seen so far is legit, oh, my God. And I'm going to say I haven't seen – I know when I say this, people are going to uh, – they're going to say, now, you look, he ain't played his first game, and you're going to say he is Larry Allen. I'm not saying he's Larry Allen. I'm not saying he is Tyron Smith. Not yet, but I'm saying these are the things and the standards that you look at that you want these guys to achieve and to just kind of put them in that same category. I'm going to say we never looked at Connor McGovern and, and, and equated him in his body of work to some of the great ones before. So the starting point and the expectations are much better. Now, I want to say shout out to Skywalker Steele who did this breakdown of uh, Cooper Beebe. And man, Cooper Beebe, who was literally doing extra handoffs with his mama. He was working on his snaps with anybody and everybody. I wish I wish he'd asked me, hey, you know, snap it to me. I don't, there's no problem. I'll, I'll go out there. I can stand there and catch the football. But has been working and working. And at first, it seemed like it, it was destined to be the second string center. But you can see already the power and the tenacity and, of course, the joy of knocking people around. Knocking people around. And how quickly he is learning. 
And I'm going to say one other thing that I feel like more than anything else, a lot of times what happens with players is you get to the NFL and basically they expect you to already know these things. They don't teach very much. But what I've seen with uh, the, the defensive line coach, that he's really becoming a teacher where he's trying to take these guys and show them more and more and more as opposed to just assuming, here's the play, here's where we're going to run, boom, go get it. And that's where I have to give the Cowboys a lot of credit where they are really coaching the guys up. Look at this, guys. This, this, is, this is amazing. Because I'm going to tell you, the thing with Biotish – that would drive me crazy is Biotish, when he went against powerful defensive linemen, would get pushed and rocked back into the quarterback's lap. But look at Cooper Beebe, the center, right there with the ball. And watch him, boom, take on the hit, right? He's got a wide base so that way he can lean either way that he's not going to get knocked off. He's strong enough, he gets rocked, but that he can right himself. He gets his big paws planted and he's moving with the guy and doesn't give him a chance. Doesn't give him a chance. You look at everybody else on the offensive line, where their guys are up the field, and let me back it up a little bit. Look, you got the pocket. You got the pocket here. Boom. Everybody else is going upfield, but on the outside. Look at Tyler Guyton. He's got leverage. He's keeping his hands on his body. His feet are working. Look at that. He ain't got a chance to get in there. And your center has got control of him. Bam. Look at that. You give a pocket like that to a quarterback, he's going to make things happen. All right, so now your your defensive tackle is going to get pushed off from the guard to BB, and he just walls him off. He's got no chance. And look at this. Boom. Starts the double team. And then just pushes them down. Look at it. Drives them down the field. And look at 95. You see 95. He ain't felt. That's a lot of beef right there. You see that belly? Look at that. You see that belly? Cooper just drove his ass. Look at this. Drove his ass five yards down the field. Put him back there like he's a linebacker. When you get that kind of movement, and look, he looks back like, damn, bro, did you have to do me like, look at, damn, bro, did you have to do me like that? And look at Cooper. He looks at him, ah, with the jugger. I bet he's smiling. I know Cooper's smiling. Look at it. Hold it. Look at dude. Dude is on skates. Look. Look, look. You see the feet flopping? Look, look, look. He literally is losing his balance. And he gets up, damn, bro. You got to do me like that? <laughs> Cooper smiling. Yeah, I've been carrying helmets all week and shoulder pads. I'm going to take this shit out on somebody, man. Look, but he gives him the stare down. You see the stare down, right? He's like, <laughs> I'm coming back for more, man. I'm coming back for more. Look, you, you, look. oh, my God. Look at that. He's like, yeah, you've been hit by the juggernaut, man. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. This is the one that I love. Okay, because he finished him and then goes on to another guy. Watch this. This is just a thing. Look at this. 95 is a big man. Th look, throws him down. Look, get your ass down. Get your ass down. And then picks up the bit blitzing linebacker. You see his man. You see his man right there on the ground, right? Pulling an Albert Hainsworth. Look at that. Whoop. You see that you see that big that big right arm? Look at that. The juggernaut. Oh, boom. And recognizes I gotta get the blitzer. Guys, look at that. He engages. Boom. Gets his feet in there and uses just raw power. Up on you, you see him up under the shoulder pads. Look at that. And just drives his ass, get your ass, get your ass down on the field. And then, boom. Guys, that's freaking amazing. Freaking amazing. Picks up the blitzer and just runs him around the quarterback. Guys, I'm going to tell you. 
if you get those two starters, two starters from one first round pick, y'all can't say shit about about the, the, the Jones's front office. You can I'm sorry. You cannot say shit about their drafting. Or you just say, Will McClay, he is a god. Because finding guys like that, think about how many times the, the, the um, Giants have drafted tackles and offensive linemen in the first round. They ain't found one guy as good as either of these two in multiple drafts. And you're going to tell me the Cowboys literally may have two? Now, I'm going to say, here's the thing about both of these guys. I want to see both of these guys as pro bowlers. I want to see both of these guys as all pro. I want to see this whole offensive line as all pro players. Because if you can, the thing is, if you say, would I rather have a great offensive lineman or a great running back? I would say a great offensive lineman. Because the running back is going to have the ball anywhere from 15 to 30 times a game. That great offensive lineman helps the running back and he helps the quarterback and he's out there every single play. And if you have great offensive linemen, they're going to open up holes that an average running back can go through. But I want to remind you of one of the greatest, and I hope that Tyler Guyton, the Tyler Smith, Cooper Beebe, and all pay homage to one of the greatest players to ever be on an offensive line. Rest his soul. On the top 100 greatest players. Say hi to my mom and dad. Hey, you know, nice guy. But when he came on that field, Larry said he had a job to do. And his job was to go through you. Larry bench press, 692 pounds. The strongest man. <laughs> I still remember that. 692 pounds. When a man can bench press 692 pounds, that man can launch you. It's like going against a bear, man. I mean, he's just humongous. Man, he'll grab you, pick you up, and start laughing. And there's nothing you can do. It's like going against a car. You're trying to stop him, and you're just sliding. I've seen him take linebackers, just drop him 20 yards. Not five, not 10, 20 yards. Tyler Gay. You go back in the huddle, and that linebacker looking at you going, what am I supposed to do? Do the best you can. Yeah, bro. Do the best you can. Oh, Everybody want to test themselves against Larry Allen. Come on, man. Bad man. <laughs> Bad man. He's a cannibal. In 1994, after nine offensive linemen had already been drafted, the Cowboys selected guard Larry Allen from Sonoma State. He would never be overlooked again. Allen protected Hall of Famer Troy Aikman and led the way for the NFL's all-time leading rusher, Emmett Smith. Oh, look at that hole! Touchdown, Cowboys! You got a guy like Larry Allen in front of you? Uh -huh. He was like a wall. I mean, it looked like a stump. It just, you couldn't move it. He was very patient, and he never made a lot of mistakes. You weren't going to have guys just running up in there going, yeah, I'm going to bull rush Larry Allen. You never hear anybody say that. Did you bull rush him? Oh, that never came to my mind. Bull rush Larry. No, he didn't bull rush Larry. No one teased the opposition one better the than John Randall John did. Randall. Hey, Charlie! Great round! J.J. Stokes! You cousin of J.J. Walker? But when he faced Larry Allen, Randall quickly learned to keep his chin strap tight and his mouth shut. You didn't taunt him? You were nice to Larry. Give him a hand up, smile at him. Sometimes he smiled back, sometimes he doesn't, but don't get him mad. In the pit, only the strong survive. For 14 seasons, Larry Allen was a raging bull in those trenches, a force to be feared. Nice job, L.A. Put it back. 
battle, big man. Way to go. Larry, man, he is one of the most powerful men that ever played the game. Being able to take the pounding and come back and play. It's about pride. It's you versus him, and it's in the trenches. Larry is one of the great ones. It's about pride, Cooper, Tyler. <laughs> Man, guys, that's what I'm talking about right there is football. Um, guys, that's what you guys have to live up to. One of the greatest players in the history of the NFL. You guys have a great start, and you have to look at this and applaud the Cowboys and say, the future is bright on this offensive line. I'm not going to say that, you know, th th there's going to be some dark days and some missed assignments, and there's going to be times when they go out there and that their eyes are going to be wide open. But they have a great basis to start with. So, yeah, we're looking pretty, pretty good right now. We are about to see something that could be special in this offensive line. And this may be, maybe, if we're lucky, getting Terrence Steele back to being healthy again. This could be the most stable offensive line since before Travis Frederick had the Hillian Barr syndrome. And with that, you know, you can say it was Michael Irvin and Emmett Smith and Troy Aikman and everything else. Guys, without that great wall of Dallas, we ain't winning three Super Bowls in four years. It ain't happening. And you have to recognize everything starts from the line. The offensive line and defensive line. And maybe, just maybe, the Cowboys got lucky and they recognize everything starts there. All right, good people. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. We had a great members live stream tonight. Um, it went on for about two hours. In fact, it went on for another half hour after that with the guys on there so i appreciate everybody and we are working on trying to get a uh the philadelphia eagles game high roller leo we gonna get high high wants to try and see if we can get a suite for the eagles game and try and get a suite for 30 people if you are interested in trying to join us in dallas if we can pull that one off um, email me cowboysmark94 at gmail and we'll see, you know, how gauge the interest of stuff and start working on this now. We're definitely going to be tailgating and um, we're going to try and make this a big, big event. All right, good people, as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys and I will see y'all soon. Peace out. <laughs>